my name is Tyler. Today we're going to be talking about finances. So here's some things that I've learned by age of 30, how to get my financial life together. And I hope these tips help you. If you're not doing these things, hopefully you doing these things will also help you financially. So the first thing is opening a high yield savings account. I had no idea that this thing even existed. These are free. If you have money sitting in your checking account, just sitting there, like move it into a high yield saving account because the, the interest, I forgot what they call it, but the interest you're gonna get, like the return each month is going to be at like 4%, 5%. It's gonna be a higher percentage than if it's just sitting in your checking account. Like the checking account, you might get like pennies. Sometimes just regular savings account, you might get like pennies versus the high yield account. You'll quickly see the return of your money like sitting in there it's just going to be better all around i use ally 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 but there are so many free options out there that are really good i like ally because it auto transfers but you can put it into buckets like it's all one savings account but you can bucket it for like vacations emergency fund like all these things it's so much better than your money just sitting in the checking account and i wish i would have known this i should have been doing this years ago and i never did so do your research and just like best high yield savings accounts and look into opening one because it takes like no time at all. It's super quick to open. The next thing is determining your values when it comes to money. You need to know what matters to you. You can't just be spending money on all the things because some things matter to you more than others. So I figured out my values. I did it because I was a part of this group called Factora Wealth. It was a financial course. They actually gifted me the course and that was a game changer. And I'm gonna talk more about that later, but they had us get clear on what our values are by kind of journaling. And so if you just journal out, you know, things that matter to you, like what do you want your future to look like? What are your favorite experiences in life? Like things like that, you can find a common threads and say, oh, these are what I value. So for me, I value comfort, connection, and delight <laughs> and so i'll spend money on really delightful food or really delightful experiences like i think disneyland is so delightful i'll spend money at disneyland like there's things that i care about that someone else might be like why are you spending money there comfort i will buy all the cozy blankets i love a comfortable cozy blanket connections i'll spend money to go to a nice dinner with my friend like I guess I like food too. So I spend a lot of money on food. That's probably my highest spendings. But for someone who doesn't care about food or comfort and all these things, they might spend money on skiing. I know my brother and his girlfriend, they really like skiing. So they spend money on that. Am I gonna spend money on skiing? Probably not. Am I gonna spend money on really fancy vacations? Only if they're delightful. <laughs> so to figure out your values, that is a great way to figure out when you're making a purchase decision, does this align with my values? And of course too, there's another aspect from the ethical aspect. If you are into ethical shopping, you can say, does this brand align with my values? Okay, the next thing you can do is audit your spending. So I got the Empower app. And again, that's a free app and it just links to your bank accounts. And oh my gosh, it puts all of your money together, like all your bank accounts, and you can see your overall net worth, which is so valuable to see. Like it's really good to know your net worth. And if you don't know your net worth, and if your net worth is not as high as you'd like it to be, like you can't, what do they say? You can't change what you don't know, or you can't track, like you can't change what you can't track. So you can never improve your net worth if you really don't know what it is. So you have to really, know these numbers or understand these numbers so through empower it tells me like in easy buckets like you spend way too much money on food and so i made lifestyle adjustments i got like hello fresh so i wasn't spending all this money on eating out i was spending way too much on eating out i was spending way too much on doordash so now i'm like okay i'm not buying doordash and stuff anymore and postmates i had a really bad car accident i used to be against postmates i had a really bad car accident and my co-workers gifted me like a ton of postmates gift cards like i couldn't drive anymore like i was i was in a wheelchair for months and so i was like stuck at home and so i got into that habit of ordering on postmates but then i'm like okay I am healed, I'm walking again, I can drive again, like all these things. Why am I still getting Postmates? But like I built that bad habit and I didn't know until I looked through the Empower app and saw my spending habits and I was like, okay, I need to start eating at home more but I'm not a great cook or like great at cooking so I need to figure out a way to make cooking easy. Um, and so that's the thing I changed to save a lot more money. So if you audit your spending habits, you can see things that make no sense. <laughs> like why, why are you spending all this money on this thing and see if you can make cuts and changes and that way you can save some money. The next thing is have conversations about money. People always say money is a taboo subject. As an influencer, I don't know how much I can charge for a campaign without talking to other people in my industry to see how much they charge for a campaign. Like you have to have these open conversations to know if you're overcharging, undercharging. I don't know if there's such thing as overcharging 
maybe there is, but you just having these conversations, especially in the influencer industry, it's so important, especially I was a model for a while, talking to other models to say, how much are you charging for different campaigns? Like that is so valuable to know that you understand in your industry, like how much people are making at your job. They say like, don't ask how much people are making. Like, how do you know you're not, you're getting paid as much as the guy next to you doing the same job if you don't have those money conversations. Just talk about money and then talk about money with your friends and family if they're comfortable with it because then you can maybe share some of these tips with them or they can share tips with you. And I feel like talking about money in a lot of really wealthy circles, they talk about money. Money is not a taboo subject in those circles. I don't know why, if you're like a non one person or we've been taught to stay away from talking about money because talking about money helps everyone. The next thing is if you have a 401k, if you work a nine to five, make sure you invest that actual money. Like some people don't realize that just because you have money in the 401k doesn't mean like you have to actually log in and like allocate the money to different investment. I don't know what to call it, investment funds, I guess. You actually have to invest that money. So go check your 401k, log in, and just make sure like it's actually being invested and not just sitting there. And if you have a 401k and you have an employer match, try to contribute as much as you can so the employer matches that amount because that's like free money. So if you can, try to make sure you can get that employee match. The next thing that really helped me was taking financial courses that were designed for me. I am a woman. Sometimes finance bros are like doing all this talking. I'm like, I don't know what you guys are talking about. So I specifically started taking courses that were designed for women. One of the courses I really like is Penny Finance. They are, I think they're $10 a month and they have like little tiny courses that you can learn on like how to one day own a home or how to get into investing and like they're like micro co courses and they're so easy to digest. They're really like speaking woman to woman and they have calculators for you to run numbers on like how much you need to put in your emergency fund or how much of this and that and like how to achieve your goals. And for $10 a month, I mean, I learned so much using that course and they are a brand partner I work with time and time again. They are really amazing to work with, but they just, I feel like they're a great platform. The next one is one that I was gifted. It's called Factora Wealth. Oh my gosh. The course is pretty pricey, but you get an accountability partner. You can get endless accountability partners. So it used to be live. I think they moved it to now it's like pre-recorded or they don't have live sessions anymore with the lady who created it. His name is Allegra, but she has a podcast. So listen to her money podcast. I'm going to say that as an next point some of the money podcasts that are really good to listen to but she has a podcast you can listen to but she's really really good financially savvy and sharing these tips so through her course she really gives all of these spreadsheets for you to put your actual numbers in to know your net worth they talk about real estate business and savings investing business real estate investing and all the different ways people build wealth and they dive deep into each of those modules like there's like 10 modeled on each session. They talk about angel investing. They were having live Zoom calls and they put you in rooms with women. So you had to talk about certain topics money wise with like five other women. And then you connect with those people outside of the group. And overall it was a whole community talking about money, dedicated to money. And I feel like that's what changed my relationship with money. It really got me clear on like what my money goals are. It got me clear on what my money values are. It got me clear on just my numbers in general. It was a really good course. I didn't really know much about angel investing. I didn't know much about real estate investing. And it just showed like there's all these different ways besides investing in stocks. That's the other thing. They had stocks investing in stocks. So there's so many other ways women can make money. And again, it's women talking to women. So it's a little more like digestible, I feel like. So those two courses were really game changing for me. Of course, there's YouTube Academy is that what they call it, where you just go to YouTube and like learn from people too. There's a lot of really good people in here sharing their money tips. So just take the effort to educate yourself on money. Money is not, it does not have to be intimidating. I know some people don't like math or like feel like it's scary. Like money is not a scary thing, especially in America. Like money is everything like businesses. I have always known as a young age, being an entrepreneur is something I really wanted to do and be because the way they talk about entrepreneurs in America, like the way they talk about Walt Disney and they talk about Ford and Warren Buffett and like all these things, like the people who are highly valued in our society are entrepreneurs. And I'm like, the only way to really make great money in the society is to do your own thing, have a business, be an entrepreneur. So like, I was like, I need to understand money and I need to understand entrepreneurship and I need to understand business. So that was like my goal always as like a young kid. So then some of the podcasts that are good are, I'm going to put it here. I think it's um, Allegra's podcast. I think it's coin and chat. 
I don't know, I'll put it here. And then another one that's good is my first 100K, Corey Dunlap, she has a book too, but she has a podcast too where she interviews women and they talk about money. And then The Financial Diet is another one that talks about money. And if you don't wanna have conversations with people specifically in your life about money, listening to other people have conversations is a great way to kind of open your mind and understand money. I have a notebook here that I wrote, another note I wanted to say, and I don't know what I wrote. Okay, there was a note where I could not read my handwriting. Well, I figured out what I was trying to say. I wanted to talk about sustainable spending when it comes to finances. If you're trying to be a more conscious or mindful consumer, there's an app called Karma Wallet, who's really cool. I actually worked with them in the past, but they are a free app and they sync with your bank account and it tells you each month an impact report. So it'll give you a score, it's called the Karma Score, and it'll tell you if your purchases lean more positive, neutral, or negative. So this month I have a 56 score, which is more neutral, meaning the brands I've been supporting, it's not really super positive, it's not super negative, which I, I would love to be neutral or positive. I don't want to be negative, but it kind of takes into account where you're spending your money and you know, are you having a good impact or a bad impact or in between? So that's really cool. And then they also have a prepaid card. It's like a Visa debit card situation where if you shop with sustainable brands, you can get cash back. So that's also a good way to kind of get more out of your money. If you know you're shopping a lot of sustainable brands, they have brands on here. Like I think Pact is on here. That's like my favorite underwear brand. So I would just add the money to a prepaid card and spend that money with Pact and then get my cash back. So that's another little finance tip for anyone who is into living a more conscious, sustainable lifestyle. It's really cool to get that report each month to just say, hey, you can do better. Here's ways you can improve. Other things that help me financially that, let me see if anything else comes to mind. I think just being, like having a side hustle has helped a lot financially because I have my nine to five job where I'm making money and my side hustle brings in additional income and that really helps living in an expensive city like LA. It's unfortunate that we have to have side hustles to kind of like get it together. But if you have a side hustle you enjoy doing, if you're naturally good at something and it comes easy, why not do it and make a little bit of extra money if you can find like a nice balance. I'm all for working the nine to five and side hustles. Like I feel like a lot of the conversations we hear now are like quit your nine to five, blah, 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 blah. Like don't quit your nine to five if you don't have to. Like if you're able to find balance and you're happy, then do that. So that's all I wanted to say. All right, let's have a conversation in the comments below. Let me know what tips have helped you with money management or money literacy or any recommendations of good podcasts about money. Let's talk about that below, and I thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.